Hello and welcome to my body of work presentation. In Plain Sight was inspired by my despondency over compost and non-biodegradable rubbish left behind by others. As a British Cycling Mountain Bike Ride Leader, I see a lack of awareness of the Countryside Code. Visually mapped as part of my contextual studies essay, I discovered rural litter had been an issue for the last hundred years. Litter is unseen until it becomes a problem, exposing social order, assumptions about the site and represents social problems through metaphors. Nottinghamshire County Council utilises restore colliery tips and disused railway lines as local nature reserves. When Veolia submitted a waste incinerator planning application on the ex-Ruffer colliery site in 2007, Friends of the Earth campaigned against it in favour of land restoration because of its significance as a lowland heathland of Sherwood Forest. I started with three themes and narrowed them down with my tutor to link ideas and photographs with contextual studies. I read Mary Douglas's Purity and Danger, John Fisk's Reading the Popular, Michael de Curto's The Practice of Everyday Lives and Phil McNaughton and John Urry's Contested Natures. Assignment 1 recorded straight photographs of waste left behind by the public after their excursions. In this format, the work was unsuccessful and rejected. My tutor, Robert Bloomfield, advised me not to look at other photographers' work and concentrate on finding my way to present rubbish. Reading Gay Hawkins' The Ethics of Waste, How We Relate to Rubbish, I investigated how nature engulfs waste, which I dismissed through a lack of contextual knowledge. However, Julie Robiole, presenting a Let's Talk Dirty, Geography and Ecologies, would identify this site as a ruderal, liminal, abandoned space. This is an avenue to explore further. Assignment 2 explored litter typology, collecting 30 pieces of litter, positioning it within the landscape and photographing it as land art. However, by disregarding dog poo bags, my tutor suggested I was missing the chance to shock viewers. Within my HE6 hangout group, I shared and discussed these images and received constructive feedback. Assignment 3, the Covid lockdown in March 2020, had changed rural areas. The Conservative government permitted once daily outdoor exercise. Rhythms of waste slowed and stopped. Bins were unemptied. Household waste centres and charity shops closed. Volunteer litter pickers continued to clear rubbish through the countryside. The rubbish intensified and fly tipping expanded into a national problem. Litter became a political subject, portrayed by the media, reminiscent of the rural concerns of the 1930s that informed the countryside code. With a chance find of discarded mirrored tiles, I built a kaleidoscope, a three-sided, open-ended kaleidoscope, and photographed individual pieces of rubbish through it. Initial experiments took place in the garden before I re-photographed in the landscape. Reactions to this image were positive and I had the beginnings of my current body of work. Tutor feedback for assignment three was hard to hear, although it was expected. Two prominent words were conceptualisation and contextualisation. My work was still too literal. I was encouraged to develop my photographic language and revisit Rosalind Krauss's essay, Photography's Discursive Places, Landscape View. I was forced to admit burnout and both my tutors agreed I needed a six month extension. From November to March 2020 to 21, I created a series of images using Robert's advice of less reality and showing more reflected surfaces. My work was developing into beautiful composite images created in Photoshop by researching surrealism, fantasy and optical apparatus. Using illusion in plain sight establishes an imagined reality in which viewers are asked to analyse and decode truth based on their knowledge. In Plain Sight explores littering through euphemisms without pressurising viewers to sympathise with the ideals and portrayals of worldwide and nationwide enterprises such as the Keep Britain Tidy or World Earth Day. By blurring, cropping and twisting, my fantastical techno-futurist images acted as a spotlight on the landscape. Photoshop ensured triangle sizes were identical and facilitated movement between landscapes. The amount of blur was witnessed and debated by adding and subtracting layers. I experimented with litter covered 3D shapes, analysing that the more abstract litter was, the more engaging the image became. Triangles represent the bias recycling symbol. Claire Strand facilitated my understanding of Marcel Duchamp's infrathin concept and I concluded that rubbish possessed an infrathin quality. A change of tutor in assignment 5 to Andy Hughes gave me a different perspective on my work. Andy pointed me in the direction of Brian Winters, a fine artist, and philosophers such as Timothy Morton's Hyperobject, Michael Serres and Jonathan Franson, which I will carry forward to SYP. The 
pandemic made artist talks more accessible. Following an Instagram live conversation between Dan Wheeler at Nottingham Photo Parlour and Al Bryden, I explored the concept of non-sites, reading Robert Smithson's The Collective Writings, Mark Orge's Non-Places and Al Bryden's Non-Places. Tutorials with Andrew Conroy, my CS tutor, developed my research on consumerism, civilising and political effects on society. By working on CS and BOW at the same time, one informed the other. The materiality of the book dummies engaged people in conversation about my work. It challenges the relationship between humans and the landscape through constructed to lidoscopic images, recategorising and reclassifying valueless waste. I'm planning to hold a local outdoor exhibition. I will develop the carousel books further and I hope to deliver an information session at a primary school with an early years teacher, COVID permitting, encouraging children to become waste warriors, testing a hypothesis from my extended essay. Thank you for listening.